What's up, everyone? This is Peter Moller with another take. And in this segment here, I'm going to talk a little bit about a graph that was published in this book by Sebastian Roby Lamarche. As you can see, it's called En Centro con la Mythologia Taina. Okay, so the discussion is going to be today is this graph right here. Okay. Now, this was Sebastian's way of breaking down in his own opinion of the Taino mythology and paradigm as it was narrated by by name. Now, a few things I'm going to note before getting into uh, this discussion. The first thing that I want to point out when we're looking at this chart you have to take it as a grain or salt and the reason why I say this because um, as we know of Panay's Relacion the original is law so the primary source for Panay's Relacion say, Bainese Relacion is uh, the only translation that we have that was copied and written by Alfonso de Ula. Now, with that being said, um, this chart has to be taken with a grain of salt. And one of the main reasons that I say that is we don't have um, the original by by name uh, to go by. Okay, what we only have is a secondhand source. And if you read um, both of Jose Juan Aaron's English and Spanish translation of Ramon Panay's Relacion, okay, you will see. When looking into the footnotes, um, Ula's break breakdown, or well not his breakdown, but his the way he copied uh, the Taino names makes it uh, challenging to break down. Meaning, um, the first discrepancy is the corruptions of many of the Taino names. So a lot of times, somebody like uh, Jose Juan Aaron had to make a lot of guess in figuring out uh, the names of each of the principal characters that are cited and mentioned in Ramon Bonnet's account. Another thing to keep in mind when uh, getting into this um, discussion, um, each account is very fragmentary. Now, without being able to look into Ramon Bani's uh, uh, original document as it concerns the antiquities of the Indians, okay, we can only make guesses. So, with that being said, <clears throat> Um, what I'm going to do here is discuss Sebastian's chart and try to be as realistic as possible. Okay, now when we're looking at uh, Sebastian's chart, it's going to be very confusing. You have to take your time looking into the chart because there's a lot of things in it. Now, the best way to understand the Taino narratives as they, they are written down and copied, you have to look at each account separately before trying to put them together. Otherwise, if, you, if for example, you're looking at this chart here all at the same time without having a, familiar, a familiarity of each part together, you're going to get confused. So it's better, in my opinion, 
to look at each part individually first before trying to make it comprehensive in your own understanding and own words um, and trying to figure out what each part represents together. Okay, so the purpose of this uh, segment is to um, make Sebastian's uh, chart a little more comprehensible as well as give my opinion and thoughts on it. So with that, we're going to start this uh, discussion. Okay, so as I have previously said, the title narratives, they are written in a fragmentary manner. And this is mainly due to um, the translation, the only translation of Ramon Bonnet's Relation that was copied down and written by Alfonso de Ulla. Okay? These stories have to be taken as a grain of salt because once again, we don't have Bonnet's original to cross-reference and to make sense of what Alfonso de Ulla copied down. Now, the best method in understanding each of these parts is by comparing many narratives. For example, the Wahayona story that can be compared with two, two narratives from coming from the Warao, one from uh, the Okono, Anuanili, uh, the Warao, Komatari, the first medicine man, and tobacco for the first spy. The narrative that concerns uh, Wahayona that can, can be compared to a few Warao myths, okay, that deals with the hurricane. Now, um, three semis, Corcote, Oprio Barabian, and Barawa Barel. Those three narratives that concerns those three semis are a little more obscure and harder to break down because we don't have anything to compare with those stories to make sense out of. So the, imp imp the interpretations for those three semis can be uh, subjective, okay? Now, Bri Brahma, we know we can easily compare that that has to do uh, with uh, yucca or the harvesting of yucca. Okay? But once again, um, those statements can also be subjective because all of those stories are written and narrated in a fragmentary manner, okay? So this is why comparing is important, even on the linguistic part, which I'm not gonna get into in this segment. However, I'm gonna make the emphasis of comparing, okay? Because that's very important because it's gonna give you a grounded perspective and is gonna get you to engage in this in a scientific manner, okay? One of the things that we don't want to do is to engage in this in a superficial way, okay? Now, uh, previously, um, we have did a video where we have suggested that the time of narratives can be astrological. Now, looking back now at, at all the things that I have studied from my opinion, I would say now that that would be a little too ambiguous to use. However, it would be easier to say that the time narratives are anthropological. That would be a much more grounded statement and easier to use. Now, to get an idea, a picture, in how the time narratives were explained, I'm gonna take uh, from uh, Ovido, 
and what he breaks down under on the Rito. Now, this is coming directly from Historia General in Natural de las Indias, which was also taken from the conquest of Borinquen or Puerto Rico. That was an English translation which takes from Book 5 of Historia General in Natural de las Indias and Book 16. Okay, that's a very good book. Okay, so I'm going to read this about the Orito. By every means at my disposal from the time I came out to these Indians, I have tried with much earnest to learn both in these islands and Tierra fame how the Indians recall the matters of their origin and ancestors, and whether they have books or by what signs and symbols they guard the memory of the past. And on this island, as far as I have been able to find out, their chants, which, their chants, which they call the Ritos, are their only books or memorials to the past from person to person, from father to sons, from present to future generations, as will be explained. And I have not found among this race anything more anciently painted or carved in relief so importantly respected and reserved as the abominable and monstrous figure. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. The second part, which is pretty important, he says, Ovito, so getting back on to this subject, this way of singing in these islands, a representation of history or a recalling of things past, both in war and peace. For in the continuity of these chants, neither are the great deeds nor events which have taken place forgotten. And they preserve these chants in their memories rather than in recorded books are in and in this fashion they recite their genealogies of their chiefs their kings and lords and works which they perform and the good and bad seasons that have befallen them and other matters which they want the young and the old to know and be very familiar familiar with and have a, a firmly carved and have and have it firmly carved in their memories and to this and they keep on with the aritos especially to commemorate the famous victories in battle okay so using that what i just referenced from ovido you can look at each narrative as a series of songs recited. So when you look at each song, each song will lead into something. Okay, now Jerry Roman is probably said it best that these accounts have to deal with tribal fisher and separation. As it deals with a cultural genesis of Titanian society as it came into the Antilles. Now we are going to discuss Sebastian's chart. Okay, now we're going to be discussing Sebastian's Cosmovision Diana. Now before trying to study this, and try to get a comprehensive understanding of all the things that are shown in this graph. I highly recommend that you read and study first his article, which is called Astronomy and Taino Mythology. So once again, before studying this, read and study his article, which is called Astronomy and Taino Mythology. Once you get a grasp of that article and order all the things that he's discussed here, when you go and look into this graph, you're going to be able to get a better understanding 
of what he is trying to argue here. And with that being said, now I'm going to talk about the graph, okay? When you're looking at this, it can be a little confusing because there's a lot of things in this graph, okay? It's like you're hallucinating because there are so many things going on inside of it, okay? The basis for this graph is his double opposition mythology, okay? Which again, in my opinion, is subjective, okay? Now, the good thing about um, reading Sebastian Roby Lamarche's books is uh, taking in his illustrations, okay? Um, the illustrations that you see in here are mostly the same from the illustrations that's in this book, okay? This one came out in the 90s, in the 90s. This one came out in the later 2000s, okay? Both of them are good sources. Um, all the sources that are useful is Stevens of Royal, The Cave of Hagua, okay? This is the second edition. Um, and two books by uh, Cuban scholars, Jose M. Garach de Monte and Alejandro uh, Quejeta Barcelo. Okay, the first one is Cuban Aboriginal Mythology. All right. And the second one is Los Semis Olividados. Okay, the Forgotten Semis. All right. Now, when you're looking at these two books, okay, they are also written in a subjective manner, okay? But as studying a Sebastian's book, um, they have good pictorial illustrations. So with that said, with me mentioning uh, the description of Anarit the Aritos by Ovido in, in Historia General Natural de las Indias, and also the Congress of Borinquen or Puerto Rico, okay? And that's the English translation of Historia General Natural de las Indias, specifically Book 5 and 16, all right? All of those themes together is going to help you to paint a picture in your mind, okay? Just like when looking at the film Embrace of the Serpent. So, with that, um, we're going to get into the chart, okay? So essentially, the chart is dealing with a series of circles or cycles, all right? Uh, the first dealing with Yaya, then Yaya El, then Deminan, then Wahayona, okay? Then on the top, you have Yukahu Bawa Marokoti, the bottom at the bay. In the bottom at the bay, will be symbolic of the summer solstice on the top of uh, the winter solstice, okay? To the side, the fall equinox, and in the opposite, the spring equinox, okay? So all of these in some form, me summarizing this, deals with uh, agriculture, okay? or an understanding of agriculture and Antilles. Now, once again, the way this is uh, broken down is subjective. And the reason why I say it's subjective, once again, because we don't have Bionese original to cross-reference. So, in many cases, when we're reading Bionese Relacion, the only translation that we have directly from Alfonso de Ula, okay, and the way it's fragmentary, fragmentary copied, okay, we can only make guesses because some passages are very obscure because of the way it was copied down. And uh, the best that um, someone like um, Jose Juan Aram uh, translated them, okay, he made guesses too because when translating, Alfonso de Ula's uh, translation of Relacion, okay, 
that document has a lot of corruption because one, the tying of words were not all um, copied down correctly, okay? And then two, the passages of each narration is very fragmented. Some parts you can get a good picture and some parts you can't. Okay, so this is why I say that you have to take them with a grain of salt. So continuing. Now bear with me with this. I'm gonna go by each circle, okay? I'm gonna start from the inside and then slowly go out, okay? I'm gonna start with Yaya, okay? Yaya, it says unity and duality. Okay, on the side we have Cirrus written down. Then on the circle of Yaya L, you have the extraction of the four twins and the extraction of the turtle. Okay, the rebellion of Yaya L and the creation of fishes and the flood. The multi cultural hero. On the next one is the circle of Deminan, okay? Itibaka Baba, Mother Earth. On the opposite, the gourd and the magic uterus. On the top, okay, uh, you have the day and I believe you have the day and the rainbow. The opposite of that, the night and the eclipse. A cross, when looking at uh, Yaya, still outside on the circle of Deminan. Okay, Deminan, noise. Cornell silence, okay? Now going to the next ones, which would be the circle of Wahayona. Okay, on top we have the mythical cave. On the opposite, we have the polar canoe. Okay. On the outside, on the top right, we have the turtle and Orion. On the opposite, on the bottom left, we have um, the Pallades and the frog. Okay, on the top left, we have the Cacique, okay, and we have the sun the sun and dry, okay, on the opposite, on the right towards the bottom, Behike, we have the moon, the moon in hunger, okay, on the outside, on the left, on the bottom, the first rain season, okay, On the opposite, on the upper right, we have the second rain season. On the bottom right, we have the hurricane season. On the bottom right. Okay. On the top left, we have the dry season. Okay, now you see on the top left, you see in this Rosa slash. On the top right, tobacco. Okay, what else? Uh, okay. The bottom right, maize harvest. Okay. On the middle, on the left side, we have the weeping hungry children. On the 
opposite of that, to to the right in the middle, are they bought on L, the C bars and the Y ends? Okay, so all of this together is dealing with different aspects of the Taino cultural mythology, okay? Now again, when you're looking at this, okay, it's, it's a pretty complex circle, okay? It's very complex and it can be really confusing, all right? So in my opinion, the best way to deal with this is to read first astronomy and Taino mythology, okay? And then after reading that, you can look into this and then read uh, both of his books, okay? Uh, first, in Consensual, Con la Mythologia Taina, okay? And then the second one, which is uh, Mythologia y Religion de los Tainos, okay? Both of them are, are very good. When getting a pictorial vision of the Taino narratives. Now, when it comes to actual scholarship, okay, you have to compare each account with stories that are similar to each narration that was copied down and accredited to Ramon Bonnet. That is how overall you get a understanding of the Taino mythos, okay? So closing up, it has to be understood that Taino mythology is anthropological. Each account has to be studied individually to get an understanding of what was trying to be conveyed in each account. Some accounts are very sketchy and obscure while other accounts can be easily compared with other narratives and other accounts that can be easily corresponded with that of Bani's Relacion. With that being said, cross-referencing is important, both in aspects of linguistic and aspects in anthropology, okay? because uh, there are stories that are similar that can be easily compared. The most obvious one with uh, the Wahayona story, okay? Um, other aspects uh, dealing with the Taino uh, narratives, one specifically um, with the reference of the Bihikas being feared, that can also be compared with a story and account of the Carminas, okay, uh, being feared for the practice of medicine, okay. So with that being said, um, the Sebastian's chart, chart, the Cosmic Vision Taina, has to be taken as a grain of salt. In my opinion, I would say it will be a first step into understanding uh, the Taino narratives, but it should not be the last step, okay? Uh, the good thing about uh, Sebastian's book is they'll give you a pictorial vision in how possibly these, narr these narratives were being told as we know how they are understood today to us, okay? But that wouldn't be enough, okay? Uh, the most realistic method into um, understanding Ramon Panay's Relacion is comparing, okay? That's the most realistic. Um, Sebastian is good as a start, but we cannot take um, his book as a definitive source. The same like um, comparing uh, these two, okay? Or um, the Cave of Agua, all right?
cannot stress more to compare. Comparing is important when it comes to this. Okay? Um, Sebastian can get a little elaborate when it comes to explaining certain things. But like I said before, the best way of understanding that is by comparing, okay? So now wrapping all of this up, now I'm just going to go into review each of the main accounts, make a summary of it, and then we're going to wrap all this up. When it comes to this, people are going to have, they're going to come up with their own interpretations. Uh, just based upon reading uh, Sebastian Robert Lamarcher's books alone, okay? Um, so let's summarize each of these other uh, narratives, okay, real quick. Now, in Bonnie's Relicio, he's he says, now let us talk about which I should have uh, mentioned first, which would be the creation of the sea. Now, some people would say, um, the narrative of the caves or the Wyoming story would be first. But the problem to that is we don't know that for sure because once again, uh, none of us has read uh, Bonnet's um, original uh, manuscript. Now until that's found, then you know, that mystery can be solved, okay? Um, and because of that, um, um, Barnes Relation, okay, the vague or the obscurity of Barnes Relation has to be taken with a grain of salt, okay, because the way it was written, it could be, you know, really hard to make out what's what, you know, that's why uh, we compare. So now, just we're going to review each one. The first one would be the creation of the sea. Okay, the creation of the sea starts with um, Yahya, okay? Yahya, Yahya has a son named Yahya El, okay? And they get into a conflict. Yahya El gets banished for four months. From that conflict, Yahya El gets killed and his bones and his remains are placed in a gourd, which later turns into fishes. Now, eventually, four principal brothers come out from a mother who died giving childbirth. Okay, and one of the four brothers, one of them whose name is Danny Nan, uh, goes to get the gourd, or attempts to get the gourd from Yaya El's uh, Bohio. So, uh, in attempting to get the gourd, the gourd falls down and breaks, and the, the sea just sticks with all the fish coming out, out of it. Okay, so they have their fool. So they run away from, Yaya, from Yaya's home and eventually meet by Monaco. Okay, so they say, uh, okay, well, let's go see our grandfather. And so, once again, Deminan takes the affront, asks his grandfather for cassava, which is cassava bread. Okay, so instead, by Monaco spits the one while onto Deminan. Deminan's back swells, okay, so he was in a serious condition and he was about to die. Um, the rest of his brothers take out a stone axe and extract the turtle out of his back. Okay, and from there, they they make they build a home and live with the turtle. Now, from that point on, there's no more explanation of that. You see, like the way these stories are narr narrated is very obscure. Then after that, there's a mention about a cave, Iguanabonia, where two principal semis who appear to be sweating. One of them was named Boniel and the other Morahu. Now going back to the beginning, the second part, which is dealing with how the natives came about. 
okay, the two, there were two principal caves in this uh, mysterious mythical mountain which was called Kaota, all right? One being, one cave being Casiba Rahagua and the lesser being Amayauna, which that would probably be a metaphor for the Tainos and the non-Tainos, okay? So this is where Wahayona comes in and he tries to go on this journey, okay? And which this would deal with the canoe trip, which later we will find about um, Anakakuya, which would be the stars, okay? Or the Pallades. And then eventually um, the encounter with Wabonito. So Wabonito heals Wahayona, okay, and he becomes enlightened with this uh, knowledge. Now, once again, the way these stories were copied down, they are very obscure. So we have to like do a lot to get an understanding in what these stories were, were trying to represent. Now, until all of Ramon Bonnet's relation is found, then, you know, this is mostly what we do. We make guesses out of the best that we can understand from this because the way uh, the stories of Ramon Bonnet's relation was copied down. So, so this is why we have to encourage uh, scientific studies when it comes to uh, these endeavors. Okay, so this is all that I'm going to talk about today. Um, now, if you want to study uh, Sebastian Mabri Lamarche's chart, I uh, recommend uh, read the article first, Astronomy and Time and Mythology. And then, after reading Astronomy and Time and Mythology, uh, look into the chart and to see what you know Sebastian was trying to get, get into okay so that chart that Sebastian uh, laid out the Cosmovision Taina the basis for that came from his article Astronomy and Time and Mythology okay which compared to compared to uh, these two right here okay uh, as dealing with scholastic studies, that would be a better article to read because in astronomy and time of mythology, um, he's um, giving you comparisons with other accounts um, that helps to make his argument um, objective, okay? However, um, these two books, they're written more like in a, like a novel, okay? So that's why I say that um, those two books are, can be subjective, okay? Because they're written like in a novelistic manner, okay? But it's good because it's gonna give you a pictorial uh, vision of each narrative, but it's not going to be enough, okay? You're going to have to compare to get an overall understanding with um, what was trying to be said in Bonnet's Relation, okay? So this is my take for today, and I encourage you guys to do your own studies. And until the next build and discussion, Taino Ti, Wariankuba, Aluka.